Hi folks, thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and at the end of last year we moved to a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week Sarah leaves the island, leaving Jack and I behind. But why did she leave? And where was she going? Find out in this week's episode of Live in the Sky Life It is just coming up to half past six and I'm getting ready to leave Skylife Cottage. I'm about to head off to Inverness to catch a flight down to London because I'm going to a friend's wedding, which is way down south in Hampshire. Yeah, it's quite a long way. <laughs> Willie's staying home to look after Jack and he also doesn't know anyone at this wedding so it's always a little bit awkward when you go to weddings you don't actually know anyone. I've just had a Barocca this morning because I feel like it's going to take a little bit out of me getting up early and travelling. I don't like getting up early. I am definitely the sleeper in this household so this is a challenge for me. But I've got my breakfast sorted and I'm taking some coffee to go for the road so it's going to be fine. I'll drive slowly and carefully and it's going to be really nice. So I would take you with me so I can show you what the journey is like. It's going to be a big change from Sky, not least with the weather. The weather here is absolutely awful at the moment. It's been raining for days. It's cold. I feel like I should be in like woolly jumpers and thick socks and boots. And apparently down south it's 19 degrees and sunny. I'm hoping I've packed the right stuff. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> days. Okay, so I just came across the bridge from Sky to the mainland and the view is so beautiful. I had to stop at this viewpoint. It's gorgeous. It's also very calm, so there's lots of midges. So I'm going to go now. So I just stopped for a quick break at the Midge Bite Cafe, which is two hours into the three hour journey. So it's a good place to stop. It flattens out a bit now as we head towards Inverness. It is weird not having Willie and Jack here. It's a bit sad. One good thing about having this road trip to myself is that I can listen to whatever music I like. When I'm by myself, I can listen to musicals, 90s pop, Disney soundtracks. So I do like that bit. <laughs> made it to the airport as you can probably hear it's just after 10 o'clock so that means it took me about three and a quarter hours to get here it's the longest journey to the airport i've ever had from somewhere where i've lived back in newcastle it was about 20 minutes by car to the airport but when i lived in Stirling, it probably took me about an hour and a half to get to either edinburgh or glasgow airport so comparatively speaking it wasn't too bad for where we live but yeah three hour drive to the airport is quite long As you can probably tell, Inverness Airport is pretty small. There are only three gates and the flights are mostly domestic. The only international destinations you can fly to are Amsterdam and Dublin. I got through security very quickly, only to find that my flight was delayed, so I had a lot of time on my hands. the extra time by having second breakfast, although I decided against coffee number three. I also browsed the charity bookshelves before it was finally time to board the plane. Okay, 
Okay, made it to Luton Airport and now just to figure out where the heck my friend is picking me up. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than Inverness. I'm so grateful to my friend Emma for picking me up from the airport, although we timed our journey very badly, getting stuck in rush hour traffic on the Friday of a bank holiday weekend. Sitting in six lanes of traffic was a huge change to the single track roads I've got used to on Sky. We did eventually make it to our Airbnb to settle in for the night. You join me in the attic of Skylife Cottage. But why am I up here? Well, I'm here to get the food to dehydrate her. Why? Because I'm going to dehydrate some mushrooms. Skylife Cottage isn't massive, so we store it up here. Anyway, I'm just going to grab the dehydrator now and take it down. Let's go through it step by step. We get through an awful lot of dried mushrooms in Skylife Cottage. Sarah and I both absolutely love them. This is the mushrooms from last year. This is all we've got left of our seps and also our chanterelles. Don't have any seps at the moment, but we have got some chanterelles, so it's time to dry them. Let's do that. First step is to clean them, the fun part. Right, that's the mushrooms done, nice and clean. And I've gotten rid of a few as well, there's a few casualties. But these ones are great. I split them because I find that if you cut these mushrooms and put them in the dehydrator, they just tend to fall apart. So it's better to just split them down the middle. So yeah, I'll flip this board over and then we'll split them up. All split down the stem and ready to be dried. So let's do that. Okay, we have our mushrooms ready to go in the dehydrator. It takes eight hours. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that's on. Let's come back after four hours and uh, turn them around. All right, that's had three hours now and it's much further ahead than I thought it would be. So I'm going to turn them around and I'm going to start it again. I'll probably give it another three hours, but I'll check it as well. Yeah, it's much quicker than I thought it would be. Cool. There you can see the top ones. They've still got a way to go. But as you go further down, you can see how they crisp up. What I do now is just switch them around. And uh, you can see the ones at the top now are the ones up at the bottom. And they're almost completely dry. I'll give it another two and a half, three hours and that should be it. You want them to be completely dry. You want them to break. If they're a little bit flexible, that means there's moisture still in there. You put them in the jar, they'll all just rot. So they've got to be completely dry. So yeah, let's put that on now. You know what, I'll put it on for two hours and check it. And uh, hopefully they'll be done. Right, the mushrooms have had another couple of hours and they look pretty good to me. Yeah, I'd say they're done. They're all pretty crispy. Let's get them out, get them in a bowl, and have a look at them. Lovely job. Very nice and dry. Looks exactly what I want. I need to get another couple of holes though. See how much they come down in size? Crazy. So that'll only about a quarter fill one of those jars. I need to have a full jar really for the whole year. So a few more mushroom hauls this year I can see coming. Maybe some adventures into the middle of the highlands to find them. You do get them fairly near here, but it's always nice to have an adventure. So yeah, that's great. It's the day after the huge journey down from Skye to Hampshire. I'm just in the Airbnb getting ready for the wedding, as you can see. It feels very weird to be wearing lots of makeup and a dress, which you might recognise from the charity shop in Portree that I bought on my birthday. So it's nice to give it an outing so soon after buying it. it feels very strange. We're usually just in outdoor clothes or jeans and trainers and walking boots. So it feels nice to get all dressed up and the sun is shining. So hopefully it's gonna be a nice day. I didn't film much in the Airbnb last night. I met my friend and we came here and we got some really nice pizza on recommendation from the Airbnb host from a place that looks like it's come straight out of a Jane Austen novel, which is really cool. And then this morning she cooked us an amazing breakfast of pancakes with blueberries so we've been really treated we've got a really nice host and hopefully it's going to be a good day at the wedding i probably won't film anything there just because i'll be too busy i'm hopefully having a good time but yep this is what i'm doing this weekend and hopefully willie is keeping you updated as to what he's getting up to you back on the isle of sky so here's the dress guys and here's my friend emma we went to uni Hi. together so we both did fine art at manchester metropolitan university many many years ago and now we are off to the wedding to have some fun and we should probably say, hi Robin. Hi Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the mushroom lady. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sarah's still down south, so Jack and I are going fishing on the boat. And Jack, you're not taking that stick with you. I've got to catch the bait as well. I'm not taking any frozen with me today, which is a bit of a gamble. So if I don't catch any mackerel, I won't get any bait. I won't be able to put the lobster pots in and Sarah won't be happy. However, let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope we catch a fish. Next time you see us, well, hopefully, we'll be in the boat. <laughs> Just a man taking his wee kayak for a walk. And his dog as well. It's always fun there. Uh, get in the kayak with Spaniel. I've actually brought a towel so that I can dry him when we get in the boat because the only way to get him over there without capsizing the kayak is to get him to swim to the boat to meet me. Which he does, because I've tried it already. Speaking of the boat, I'm here, so uh, let's get in. Jack's still on the shore. He hasn't figured out he just needs to swim over, so I'll have to tell him before he will. <coughs> yeah. Jack, come! <sighs> He's not going to do it because I'm filming. Okay, I'll stop filming, then he'll do it. Of course. Yep. He likes a bit of drama, does this dog. He's coming now, though. Good boy! Right, I'm gonna have to haul him out of the sea, so uh, I'll probably stop filming now. Only got one camera. You're nice and dry now. Well, drier than he was before anyway. Look at the towel. It's absolutely soaked. Right, you're on board now, so don't get back in. I've only got one towel with me. Well, this is not the ideal scenario. Everything's set up to go fishing. Had the boat running, because I always run it for a few minutes, just a couple of minutes, so that I know it's not going to conk out and I'm happy before it's set off. Yes, I've got an auxiliary engine as well. Problem was, Jack jumped up at the console there and the engine just conked out right away and I knew exactly what he's done. He's somehow disconnected the connection to the battery and the engine, which means that I can't get the boat started and it's a bit of a bust. I'm going to have to wait and then get out here and see if I can fix it properly by it's not a job for today. So a bit gutted really. It's not the boat's fault this time, it's Jack and his inquisitive nature. I did tell him to get down, but in the process of getting down he pulled something. So I think he's disconnected the cable to the battery. Which is a nightmare, but uh, it's what it is. That's what happens if you take a wee dog on a boat. He wasn't in any danger or anything, he's not going to get electrocuted or anything, but I think he's pulled a cable out inside the box there. So, uh, <sighs> fishing is a bust. Here's what I'm talking about, this would normally just turn over. Absolutely nothing. Totally stone dead. It's that black cable. It definitely runs up into there. And then that obviously connects to the engine at the back of the boat. But unfortunately, I think the connection is now gone due to the fact that Jack jumped up on there and put a lot of weight on here. I think he's just pulled the cable out. That's a bit of a disappointment. Back to the house. And uh, I don't know, what's the telly, I suppose? Oh, well, we'll just go back to the house then, pups. Didn't want to go fishing anyway, did we, Jack? No, we'll go for a walk instead. Yes. Well, we're back on dry land. That was a bit of a misadventure, but uh, I don't mind putting stuff like this in when we mess up, you know? It should be in, because it's real life on Sky. If you did everything right all the time, it would be a very boring channel. So yeah, that was this week's screw up. I think I'll have a beer I say. It's the afternoon after all on a Sunday. So why not? Let's do it. <sighs> back in the house. I think I will have that beer. There's no small irony in uh, the t-shirt that I chose to wear today. But I got specially made because I think we got about a thousand comments that said this so uh i thought i'd get on a t-shirt <laughs> bust out another thousand to be fair i can probably fix this thing myself i just need to put a cable back in but yeah funny t-shirt anyway <laughs> Good morning. It is the morning after the wedding. I am feeling not too fresh, but not too bad. <laughs> My voice is a little hoarse because there was a lot of singing and laughing last night and it was such a lovely day. We're staying in Hook Village. I'm just waiting at the train station now to head into central London to meet my brother before I get a flight back this evening. So it's a very whistle stop visit to the south. I was gonna stay down for longer and maybe stay with my brother for a night or two. I have to get back to Skye for tomorrow because me and Willie have got something very exciting planned which I'm sure you'll find out about. So it's a very quick visit, but I am gonna manage to see my brother for some lunch before I catch my flight, which is really nice. So I'll take you with me into London and you can see how living the sky life copes with living the London life <laughs> for a day. <laughs> Carnival. This is definitely the busiest day on the sky. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm a long way from Sky right now. The Notting Hill Carnival is an annual Caribbean carnival event that has taken place on the streets of the Notting Hill area of London since 1966. There's a parade route around the streets with floats, dancers and mobile sound systems. There are also stages dotted around the area, all blasting out lots of different types of music. It was really good fun, but honestly, the crowds and the noise were very overwhelming after the serenity of Skylife Cottage, and after a couple of hours at the carnival, I was ready to get back. That was Notting Hill Carnival. That's the first time I've experienced it. It's pretty full on. I think there's probably more people in that little tiny bit of London than there is on the whole Isle of Skye. <laughs> Definitely felt like it anyway. <laughs> a bit of a shock to the senses, but a lot of fun. I've left my brother there. He's going to meet his friends and keep partying, but I'm walking back to the train station now because I've got to go catch my flight and head back up to the Isle of Skye. <laughs> I think that was pretty much as far from the sky life as I could get in the UK right now. Pretty tired. I'm gonna head back to my nice quiet little cottage in the Glen. <laughs> Only a flight and then a three hour drive to get home. Hey Jack, who have you missed for the last few days? Who's not been here? Daddy's been here. Jack's been here. There's one more though. One person's missing. It's quite late. It's about half past twelve. It's past your bedtime, isn't it, pups? If you could see anyone right now, who would you like that person to be? What do you hear? What's that? <coughs> It's okay. It's not in your It's mummy! Who's this? <laughs> Did you miss me? Jack, who's this? It's mummy! Ah, <laughs> Saya. I miss you, puppy doggo. Hi. Hi. I made it home. Did you miss me too? Oh uh, yeah, I missed you a bit. Yeah, alright, fair enough. Are you happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy to see him? Yes. Home again. Home. Hi. Did I get a cuddle now? Okay. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> you join me walking out to the boat <laughs> I'm going to try and fix whatever it is that Jack did to it and that is Jack you can hear in the background your mum's there Jack go get your mum bless him he wants to come with me and he would normally if he hadn't broken the boat the last time <laughs> oh bless him oh there she is Oh, she's giving him a cuddle. Right, cool. Let's go. Let's go and fix this boat. <laughs> I don't want to actually know if I can fix the boat. I'm hoping it's within my skill set. I don't particularly want to throw any more money at it again. If that's what has to happen, I guess that's what has to happen. It may just be something really obvious, like a, a fuse on the battery. Could just be all this connection. I don't know. So we're going to investigate. And, uh, yeah, let's do that. 
It's been really bad weather on Sky for the last week, for like a whole week we had rain. Today is gorgeous. So I'm walking along and I bust out another thousand t-shirt, which I hope doesn't come back to sting me. <laughs> we'll see. Here she is though, sitting on the sand. Half got a bit of water on the deck, but I expected that. It isn't an automatic bilge pump at the moment, but I have ordered one and in fact it's arrived now. So I'm going to hook up an automatic bilge pump as well. Along with automatic bilge pump, I decided to get a separate battery and that is what's going to power the bilge pump because it's automatic. So it can keep going by itself and I don't have to worry about the main battery getting flat so I can start the boat. Speaking of starting the boat, that's something that I really want to do. But the first thing I want to do is see if the bilge pump works, the original bilge pump, because if the bilge pump works, Works. that means that the battery is still fine and it's not a fuse on the battery let's see if the bilge pump actually pumps and then we can chase down the problem from there there's the bilge pump i'm going to put the button on now and if that starts spitting out water that means that the battery is okay there we go that's fine the bilge pump works which means the battery's okay so it's a connection issue so let's get right into it i'm checking now to see if it's an intermittent issue now obviously the engine isn't in the water so i'm not actually trying to start the engine i'm just trying to see if it sparks over and if it is i'll turn it straight back no, it's still completely dead, so there's a connection problem from here. This is the bit that the dog pulled down. We need to find out what's going on in here. Before I took that apart, I thought, you know what, I'll go to the back of the boat and check and see if everything's okay there. Now, I took the cover off, as you can see, and I looked in there and look what I found. Now, I think when I took the cover off the last time just to do an inspection on the engine, I've shot that down and I've snapped that cable. And I think that's the only thing that's wrong with the boat. That's a fairly easy fix to put that back in. Let's check that now, and um, if I start the boat, um, and it's fine, then I owe Jack Spaniels a big, big apology. Hi, I've just opened this uh, little grub screw out. There's like little bits of broken off wire that I'm now taking out. And then the wire, the original wire now should, should go in place, which I think it just did. That's nice and tight, I think. All right, is it connected to the battery again? Moment of truth. Yes, that's all I needed to know. The boat is fixed. So the good news is, the boat is actually fixed, the engine. There was nothing wrong with it in the first place other than I had knocked the wire out. Now, I didn't give Jack Spaniels a tail and off or anything other than him jumping up. He's not meant to jump up at all. It's bad for him to do that. So I told him off, I said, look, get down. Didn't get down, I told him off and said, you know, stay down. When I thought he'd pulled the cables out, I didn't get mad at him or anything. I don't do that. It's pointless to do that with the dog. Jack would never have understood what was going on if I told him off for a wiring issue. So there was just no point in giving him a tail and off for that. But I do owe Jack Spaniels an apology and I'm going to do it on YouTube. I'm just pleased that the boat isn't actually broken and I do feel a little bit silly but this is all going in the video because as I've said before everything goes in. I'm relieved but uh, I do feel a bit daft. <laughs> right I've cable tied that nice and neatly away from the side so that when the cover of the engine comes down it's not going to interfere with that wiring. Very pleased to have done this job myself as well. The sweetest part though is that on this occasion I didn't have to burst out another thousand. <laughs> <laughs> now this, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, actually that does hang down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in that plate there and then I'll put a cable tie under there. There's nothing there at all. So I'll drill a hole through, put the cable tie on and that'll prevent happening what I thought had happened in the first place, but hadn't. If you put any pressure on there, that will rip those cables out. You can see why I would have thought that. So I'm going to do that as well whilst I'm here. All right, so you can see here, this is now cable tied. So this is now being held up, whereas before it was just floating and I feel much happier about that. The old expression, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. Well, in this case, I felt like I should. That wasn't being supported and so law what i thought happened flipping would happen now that i've mentioned it and haven't done anything about it jack spaniels you jumped up at the console on the boat you shouldn't have done that but you got blamed for something you didn't do and i am sorry and you can have some sausages from daddy is that nice a little bit more good boy nice and gentle you don't even need to sit down because this is a sorry sausage feeding <laughs> There you go. Last piece and you can't have any more because that would be too much, too fatty. All done. That's a good boy. I won't blame me for anything again, I promise. To be fair, it really did look like he'd done it, but he hadn't, so fair's fair. Humble pie. Humble sausage. Sorry, sausage. Sorry, sausage. <laughs> I'm sorry, sausage. <laughs> Jack's like, wait, you can blame me for something else, you know, if this is what happens. <laughs> you forgive me? Um, have we learned our lesson about jumping up at things though, Jack? No, not really, but we'll let them off with it. Shake hands, Paul. Paul, let's shake hands and be friends. Good boy. 
As always folks, thank you so much for watching our video. We really hope you enjoyed it and we hope you enjoyed seeing my adventures off the island. Did you miss me? Heck yeah, of course I did. I had a great time while I was away, but I'm very glad to be back at Sky Life Cottage. If you did enjoy this video, please do leave us a like, a comment, or subscribe to our channel if you don't already. It's free to do and it helps us to grow as a channel. If you did enjoy the video and you want to support us a little bit more, you can do so over on Ko-fi. You can buy us a coffee or you can buy Jack a treat. Or you can just contribute towards the running of the channel so we don't have to finance it all ourselves. If you want to help us out more long term, you can become one of our amazing patrons over on Patreon where you get a bunch of extra content about helping us out every month. Thank you so much again for watching our video and we will see you next week at the normal one. Yay! There's. Leaving our suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life This is the fresh mackerel that we caught two videos ago. We confession, this next section was meant to be in last week's video, but we forgot to include it. Oops, so here it is this week instead. Okay, so the next day and the mackerels have a chance to salt overnight. When it's been salted and a lot of the moisture has come out, it's much easier to smoke and also it gives it a much nicer flavour. So what I'm going to do now is put it on the hot smoker, take it outside, smoke it for about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll have a look at it. Let's do that. Okay, here is my hot smoker. I think it's been in a previous episode when I smoked trout. This is very different. Well, the fish is different anyway. In the bottom here, take out this tray. And I've got this plastic bag of wood chips. Now they are oak in this case. A couple of handfuls will do it. I got these a long time ago from a professional smokehouse. I asked what wood they were using and they said go and help yourself at the back. Very kind of them actually. Next then goes your tray. And the smoke forms underneath this and then the drips from the fish go onto this tray. So the first tray goes in which is this one. Like that. A few fillets in. You don't want to overcrowd it and you must keep the skin on because if you take the skin off the whole thing will just fall apart. The skin is what's keeping it together. Now the top layer, another grill, slots into this one and I like to space them out so that they're not directly over each other. Now we pop the lid on, open the vent, close these little lugs at the side and now it's ready for smoking outside. That's lit, that'll take about 20 minutes now. We'll let it get on. Just spotted these two birds in one of my lobster pots that appeared yesterday. We're gonna release them now. We're gonna have to figure out a way to have this not happen because it happened once before as well. They're just bobbing around in there, but let's get them out before they get too distressed. It's a little robin and a fledgling, isn't it? Yeah, this is because we just came back and we were so tired, we just left them where they were. Yeah, we'll need to figure out a way of stopping it, maybe just put them in the shed. Just cover them up. <laughs> yeah, put a tarp over them, that'll Sorry, do it. Guys. Sorry about that, guys. They can't have been in there long because we got back late last night. I'm releasing Robin and baby Robin. Up they come, up, up, up. There we go. Hey! One. one. That's mum. Go on, baby. Off you go. Off you go. Off you, go. Off you pop. Come on. Fly away. Yay! Hey. Like That's fine. They're tweeting. I think they're happy. But let's do something that needs to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yes. Put them under the top. Go around that way, guys. I put some crumbs out. Wait, that's 20 minutes later. Let's check the fish. Oh, very nice. Probably done, but I like it a little bit more smoked than that, so I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. And Jack knows that he's probably gonna get some, don't you, Jack? That's why he's hanging about. Where there is food, particularly fish, there will be a Jack Spaniels. Oh yeah. Come on, Dad, it's ready. Time to eat the fish. Well, it's not actually, Jack. It's not quite ready yet, but nearly. All right, let's check it again. I'll have a heavier smoke now, a bit darker, a bit more flavor the way I like it. Let's check it out. Here we go. I've taken the clamps off already. Ooh. Don't know 
what you think, but I think that looks absolutely delicious. But I'm not going to eat it now because I like it cold. Hot smoked mackerel to me is better cold. Do you agree? Do you think it'll be better hot? I'm sure some will, but for me, I prefer it cold. Buy us a biscuit? No. <laughs> I don't yeah, want a dog buy biscuit. Us a biscuit. <laughs> I've actually eaten some of his dog biscuits. Remember, I ate those dog biscuits in the pub that he was giving. Oh yeah. Yeah, they were actually really nice. Mm. Anyway, I take this. Don't forget you. I'm here to get the dehumidifier. Well, I mean, well, I'm here to get the d. What's it called again? Dehydrator. What about dehydrated? Been up here so long. I have a midgey in my car. Midgey's on my phone. Because, ah! <laughs> I just really like, I didn't miss the rhino toy though. <laughs> it is just coming up to... Click here to subscribe to live in the sky life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.